Here at Healthcare Triage, we never shy away from the complex issues, even those with complex, multi-sided arguments. As always, it's critical to appraise both sides and evaluate the benefits and harms of any approach. Thankfully, there's one simple argument that I think we can all agree on, but is not legs. Apologies to Hank Green, but that's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. With issues that are this heated and prone to controversy, it's especially important to take an objective, analytical, evidence-based approach. So with this in mind, to the research. Wait, what? There's obviously no research. What were you expecting? But to maintain our credibility, we should present Hank's side first, especially if you are unfamiliar with our dear friend Hank Green and or his controversial take on these body parts. According to an impassioned Blog Brothers video from 2019, Hank is of the opinion that while butt is legs is not grammatically correct, it is anatomically correct because your leg bone is in your butt. We have publicly dissented from this opinion, and now we're making it official. So here's the right, I mean, our opinion. Let's look at the anatomical definition of the term leg as described in Gray's Anatomy. And here we're talking about the standard reference book of human anatomy, not the American drama series Gray's Anatomy. Anyway, according to the real Gray's Anatomy, an anatomical convention, the leg is the part of the lower extremity between the ankle and the knee. Basically, the leg is a separate entity from the thigh and pelvic girdle that make up the lower extremity. With this in mind, the leg is pretty distant from anything we would consider the butt or the gluteal muscles. So that's the medical answer. Admittedly, the Encyclopedia Britannica defines a leg as a limb or appendage of an animal used to support the body and or provide locomotion. The gluteal muscles are critical to all of this. So from that sense, you could argue that butt is legs, but that's not medically Sound. We sincerely hope we did not fall from the graces of the Green Brothers for this conclusion, but we must remain loyal to the medicine. But anyway, while we all enjoy weighing in on internet controversy, let's take a moment to very smoothly transition to some recently released guidelines on colorectal cancer screening. In May of 2021, the United States Preventative Services Task Force updated its recommendations for the screening of colorectal cancers. Like previous guidelines, the task force strongly recommended screening all adults 50 to 75 years old for colorectal cancer and provided a weak recommendation for screening between ages 76 and 85, in part because the net benefit in this group is much smaller. The newest update of this guideline, though, now includes a moderate strength recommendation that adults between the ages of 45 and 49 also get screened. In addition to colonoscopy, there are several other screening methods that can be used, each needing a different frequency of repeat testing. So talk to your doctor to come up with the best option if you or a loved one are in these age groups. This guideline means that these tests are covered by all insurance in the United States. One caveat to note is that these recommendations are only for those at average risk of colorectal cancer. So talk to your doctor to decide the best plan if you think you're at increased risk. Whether you follow the medical definition of legs or believe the misconception that butt is legs, one thing we can all agree on is the importance of colorectal cancer screening. Thanks to Elliot Rappaport, our contributing writer who had to strain to come up with this episode. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on mental health. It's all in your head. We'd also like it if you'd like the video and subscribe to the channel down below and consider going on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help make the show bigger and better even during a global pandemic. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Severitz, Edward Lillahome, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.